want to take over? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Anya, one of the co-founders of Active Circle. Active Circle is a 501c3 nonprofit with the mission of creating active, connected communities. Nivrithi, the other co-founder, um, and I started this initiative in 2020 the, with the midst of the pandemic when we realized that everyone was extremely isolated. Uh, looking at the amazing Kachi community, we have here with us today, uh, we decided to extend this to those who aren't as lucky to have such a support system. Since then, we have hosted a variety of group events, uh, received a number of awards and donated many funds. Today, we wanted to bring light to someone in our Kachi community who has transformed his life for the better. I will now pass it over to Sohan. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Anya. I hope you all can uh, hear me. Uh, like Anya mentioned, my name is, okay, let me change the slide. Uh, my name is Sohin, uh, Sohin Sabla. I'm uh, located here in the Bay Area. Firstly, I'm uh, very grateful for the opportunity and excited to, you know, talk to you all about. Uh, Sohin, your voice all... is breaking. Sohin, your voice is breaking. Okay, one second. Let me see if I'm on the right connection. Uh, not to interrupt you, but can we start with the Naukar Mantra first, please? Yes, please. Sure, yeah. If anyone wants to take the lead, please go ahead. Ramankal. Bhavini. Bhavini. Ramankal, I follow. Okay. Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Siddhanam Om Namo Ayariyanam Om Namo Vajayanam Namo Loye Savasahunam Eso Panchanamo Karo Sava Pava Panasano Mangalanancha Savisim Padamanghavai Mangalam I think Sohin is checking his mic. Yeah, I was trying to. Is this any better or still muffled? Uh, slightly muffled, but it's okay. I mean, slightly. Do you muffled. have a soul? Do you have a soul throat? No, I don't. Maybe it's the headphones. I, okay, I think <laughs> just checking. <laughs> okay, let me let me uh, give me like a quick minute. I'll I'll change something. Ramba, you have to be सारो चे आए ये उमरे भी अटलो काम कर रहे था न अटलो ध्यान रखो था अटला अवॉर्ड मले था आके खास कांग्रेट्यूलेशंस राम अंकल इज ऑलवेज वर्किंग ऑन समथिंग आई नो ही इज अ ही इज यंग एट हार्ट that's what we all want to be. Right. We have all to right. learn a lot from him. Okay. Go ahead, Swain. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Is this better? Hopefully. Yeah, better. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, it was the AirPods to blame. Okay. We are past the technical challenges. Let me share my screen. Which is this one? Okay. Hold on. Let me find the screen. Okay. All right, you can see the screen, right? Perfect, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was saying, uh, thank you. I mean, I'm really uh, excited to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Um, I think Anya introduced me. Uh, my name is Sohin Savala. I'm located here in the Bay Area. Uh, today, I wanted to, you know, focus on the, the, the title of the presentation is Fact to Fit. But uh, before I begin, I want to kind of, you know, set expectations. Uh, starting with like, I, I want to under, I want to like make clear what this next sixty minutes or I don't know we have like maybe next fifty minutes is not about. 
So the next 50 minutes is not about a secret pill to you know transform your health within like 50 minutes or 50 days or any any fast way of doing things. It is if anybody is telling you they're going to get you fast results, they're perhaps lying, or even if they're not lying, it is the results are going to go down the drain as fast as you saw the results. Uh, so this is not about in the next 50 minutes, I'm not going to tell you anything transformation that's going to transform your lifestyle. That being said, I'm going to still leave you guys with like three key takeaways, which when you implement to the fullest, I'm, I'm sure you will see uh, significant uh, health benefits. Uh, and so that brings me to what this is about. Uh, what I'm, what we'll do in the next 50 odd minutes is basically uh, I want to I want to share like like Anya was mentioning I went through a major uh, lifestyle transformation and I saw amazing results. So I wanted to share mostly learnings. The main idea and goal behind me doing this is like not to you know uh, tell people to do what I think they should be doing, but just to inspire people to just think about their health more holistically. If you are someone who's already fit, I hope this presentation or this talk motivates you even more. If you are not, maybe this is an inspiration or maybe this is a sign for you to start thinking about your uh, about your health and fitness. Before I go any further, uh, if you have any questions, I would appreciate if you could park it towards the end. But if it's a burning question and you've got to raise it right then and there because there are moments when you know it's the right time to ask a question if you want to interrupt, please just unmute yourself. I can't see everybody on the screen here, but just feel free to unmute yourself and uh, and, and interrupt me. I'm happy to kind of answer the question, answer any question that you have. <clears throat> All right, with that, uh, before I get into the uh, subsequent slides or the full flow of the presentation, let's get our creative juices flowing. Uh, what if I, uh, um, if I were to compare our human body to a car, right? And if I were to ask you, what is the similarity between, between a human body and a car, what would you say? Anyone wants to take a shot? What would you think is the similarity between a human body and a car? A properly working car helps the driver go wherever he wants. Same way a body, the soul, it is the car of the uh, soul. So if you take good care of uh, your body, you can progress your soul and achieve your aim of salvation. Yeah, I was going to say something very similar. Firstly, I mean, I didn't get the name. Narendra Uncle, thank you for, or Narendra Shah, thank you. I should not call people uncle because it's kind of difficult to, uh, you know, I don't want to distress with anyone. But uh, thank you, thank you for the input. Uh, and I think, yeah, you're right, right? So the way I look at uh, a human body and a car at a very fundamental level, both are machines. A car is a mechanical machine, a human body is a biological machine. And like you rightly said, uh, uh, Narendra Uncle, like you should take care of your take care of your body. The better you take care, both the car and the body, you have to make sure that the engine is right. Now think about your dream car. If we buy our dream car, we want the car to last forever, as for forever, right? For as long as it can. And for that to happen, we've got to take care of the engine, we've got to take care of the tires, we've got to maintain the car, clean it up, and and do a regular maintenance of the car. Same goes with the human body. Human body is just a biological machine and it, it works input and output and you've got to take care of it. But there is one primary difference between a car and a human body, which is super interesting and super uh, uh, keen for or something we should, we should truly understand, which is that if your dream car, you have not maintained for some reason and you have to, you have to scrap it, you can always buy a new car, right? But what happens to our body? It, it is we, unfortunately or fortunately we only get one body and that's it so we got to make sure that you know you're taking good care of it and our dream car can live for as long as we want it to live with that let me get into the presentation right so the other day i was just on google and i was like okay what are the most uh, asked questions on google obviously this can differ based on where you are i was looking at it from a different point in time but here are the top three questions first one is can men get pregnant i mean I mean, there's, there's, I mean, I have two daughters and I've seen, seen my wife go through her pregnancy and how much pain she has to go through and feeling helpless. I'm like, I wish I could take away her pain. And maybe if I could get pregnant, I don't know what it would look like, but I'm, I don't know why people are looking for it, but people are looking for, can men get pregnant? Second one is who am I, you know, self-actualization. But the third one, which I want to focus on is how can I lose weight fast? Now in this question there are two fundamental uh, uh not problems but two fundamental uh, uh lens uh, 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 i would rather have people look through it from a different lens now i'll tell you what that means there are two main things here right one is weight we are so fixated on the weight 
See, look, our, our health is very, very important and weight is one indicator of our health. Usually weight is a lagging indicator. So if you start to put on weight, that means something in our body has been going wrong for much before. And weight is just a, something that you can realize, something that you can see. And people just get fixated on the weight because for obvious reasons, you know, you, it, it helps people drive confidence. You look in a certain way, you fit, you fit in your old clothes or your best clothes, et cetera, et cetera. The second issue with this question is the, the time fast. Nothing happens fast. Weight loss or health is not a destination. It's a journey. You have to think about your health, recording your own well-being. Oh, go ahead. Recording this session, Dimple Bhavini. We are recording it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh, now with that, I want to I want to present some uh, some of the numbers here. Right. So on an yearly basis. In the US, the health and fitness industry is like people are spending $72 billion a year on health and fitness. Now, if you think about just that number, 72 billion is roughly the GDP of Sri Lanka. The whole country's GDP is 72 billion, where, where people are just spending that amount of money on health and fitness. And it is also combined revenue of NFL, NBA, MLB, and NHL. All the big leagues in the US, if you combine all of them, it is much more than the 72 billion is much higher than the all the leagues combined. Now, after spending so much money, you would think like everybody in, in the US looks like Greek God, right? With six pack abs, eight pack abs and roaming around. But that's not true. What is also happening is in between 1999 and 2018, obesity rose from 30% to 42%, which means it has jumped by more than 30% in just like 18 to 20 years. And severe obesity, which is basically you're at the, you're at the cusp of being as obese as one can be, jump from 5% to 9%, which is almost doubled. Now, before we go any further, I want to clarify, like I am not a doctor, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a dietitian. I have, I am not certified with any of these uh, certifications. But I think uh, Ram uncle was mentioning at the uh, beginning of this call, someone asked him like, hey, you're already healthy. I think Nimesh, you were asking him, why are you here? Very similar to uh, Ram uncle's answer. I love learning and discussing about food, fitness and health because the more you're constantly in the rhythm of talking, understanding, surrounding yourself with people who like to talk about health, be healthy, you will yourself be healthy. So, and and and, and this is what I love doing. This is not my full-time job. Obviously, I have a full-time job, but this is something that really uh, uh, motivates me and I'm super passionate about this area. And that's why I'm here to share my learnings and my experiences, not just in terms of my own lifestyle transformation, but how I have helped like hundreds of people uh, around the world to do the same. So next is healthy or not. Here I want, if if possible, I would invite people to, you know, actively participate. Don't be a passive listener. I want you to really, uh, I want the next, like, you know, whatever time that we're spending to, to impact your impact your life in some way or the other. So if you could like really pay attention and, you know, engage, I think that would be amazing. But if you are not fully attentive, I also understand that. And you can always reach out to me whenever um, you have any questions or like, you know, as a follow-up. But let's go ahead with this one. So, what you're going to see on the screen is like, I'm going to go through a few foods and I'm going to ask the question on the screen, which is healthy or not. Uh, and I want to, basically, I want to invite you to answer this question. Do you think this is healthy or not? And if you think it's healthy, why it's healthy? If you think it's not healthy, why it's not healthy? So the first one is your favorite breakfast cereal. What do you think uh, is happening with that? Is it healthy or not healthy? Not healthy. anyone. Why? Because breakfast cereal is supposed to be protein based and uh, salad based and uh, good combination. Here, mostly it is all uh, starch and uh, carbohydrates. Heavily yes. processed. Yes, exactly. Heavily processed. Any more inputs? A lots of sugar. Exactly. Too much sugar. In fact, uh, any top cereal brand you take and one cup of which is 40 grams of cereal has 12 grams of sugar. So just imagine. So if you take a cup, 12 grams, so any, so 25% of a cereal bowl is just sugar. You're filling it up with sugar. And that, that amount of sugar is more than the daily recommended allowance by, uh, 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 for, for sugar specifically. And this is more than what you can get in one can of Coke. So these are like everybody mentioned, highly processed, uh, very starchy, 
and uh, obviously they don't have any uh, nutritionally almost white i mean they might have some nutrition but majorly more do, do more damage than good what about this one vegetable oil really bad bad really bad because there are better oils that we can use every every time use cold pressed guinea guinea jo tel guinea jo tel nice yeah exactly highly refined uh, they add chemicals to improve colors and odor and we don't really want to put chemicals in our body right synthetic things yeah protein bar which one did you say sneha guinea jo tel guinea jo tel cold pressed oils can you write it in the chat please yes thank you what about protein bar i think uh, really you're talking bad. about protein mm -hmm. yeah what, what do you think is happening why is it not healthy uh, high in sugar yep high in sugar high in high in like fructose corn syrup they all they also include a lot of like trans fat and artificial sweeteners uh, and in addition to all of this the actual reason why we have this is protein but the protein content in the bar is so high that you know there is this concept of bioavailability like when you eat a certain food let's say it's high in iron or high in protein let's say it has 10 grams of iron it is not necessary that when you eat spinach that has 10 grams of iron your body is going to get 10 grams of iron your body may get absorption. fewer than that because absorption exactly the bio the, the quality of the food the absorption rate a lot of things go in and the bioavailability actually goes down so same thing happens with this protein bars they're giving you some amount of protein but the you know it you cannot have like 30 40 grams of protein and just that one bar and it's going to absorb in your body so uh, that's the other issue with that what about this sports drink absolutely no uh you know no, except e electro uh, electrolytes uh, it is really bad because high in sugar only good exactly. thing is electrolytes yeah i mean you do get electrolytes in vitamins so you should give it, give that credit to the health drinks but you're right like it has too way too much sugar almost like i can as as much as a can of coke um and, and surprisingly one thing uh, i was reading somewhere is like more than 50% on an average more than 50% of sugar consumption comes in the form of liquids whether it's your tea coffee healthy drinks or whatever it is right a lot of sugar actually gets in our body just through uh, liquids what about this low fat or no fat anything that is the worst <laughs> why uh, i mean sorry low fat is good i'm uh, i meant no sugar is worst low fat is good no fat low fat is very good okay any other thoughts it's very processed all of this is very processed even the oils that we use for spraying uh, on you know like what you get in those bottles is extremely processed so anything that is very processed loses its natural uh, ability um, its natural goodness i yeah, like i i use non fat milk in my coffee without sugar and i think it is a good substitute instead of the regular milk see i think what yeah. we are uh, oh, go ahead some someone was saying something sorry so i was going to say sohin maybe there is a catch there that that you are trying to get to uh, <laughs> just by reading no, no fat I, people shouldn't think healthy yeah. no 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 i'm i'm really happy because uh, these these <laughs> questions are really like you know to i mean we all we all get confused especially this this particular thing is is a big myth you know what happened in the early 1990s sugar industry sponsored a research with stanford scientists from the stanford uh, university to say that sugar is so basically sugar, at that point what was happening is like a lot of people were having heart issues right and people thought it was sugar or fat or whatever is going on so sugar industry paid scientists some money to say that it is the fat doing this and i can share the link with you there is a proper study that is out right now but it was a sponsored study to blame fat for all the bad that's happening in our life so therefore you have no fat low fat trans fat this fat that fat we have so many so much information about fat however fat is not bad our body needs certain amount of fats good fats of course we don't want to eat like trans fats and bad bad quality fats but fat in itself is not bad our body actually needs fats to perform at a certain level but we don't need processed sugar so actually sugar is the bigger culprit but because of how um the industry works and how we get brain was sometimes and we we normally are confused most of the times which is what i'll address next but generally speaking don't go with this fad of like i mean look yeah if you if you like no fat if you don't want to add extra fat to your diet i understand but ha having good quality fats in the form of avocado or nuts is really really uh, important as well what about this salad should be easy this one Salad, as long as it does not, 
Uh, exactly. Yeah, without dressing, salad is good. Uh, like I for brunch, I eat tomato, cucumber, and the romaine lot lettuce. Oh, exactly the uh, picture. With, uh, exactly. Without any dressing. So you can use dressing like lemons and orange orange juices. I mean, naturally, again, natural foods. Yep, yep, exactly. You got it. What about this? This may be uh, a little controversial, I guess. I don't know. What I just said, non-fat milk. No. Non-fat. What about milk in general, whether it's non-fat, fatty, whatever, like all different, you know, I get so confused, like back in India, when I needed milk, I would go to one corner shop, they would give me one packet of milk, that's it. Here I go to a store and there is like thousand variety of milk. I'm like, oh God, what do I buy? No fat, low fat, lactose free, this free, that free, there's so much happening. Pure milk. Go ahead. Pure, go pure, giant, pure Jain food and pure veg food, milk uh, becomes one of the necessity for calcium and lot of other things for bones and other things. Yeah, so cow milk definitely is one of the most nutritionally dense food out there. But I want to I want to leave you with I'm not going to tell it's good or bad, but I'm going to leave you with some facts, uh, which is one: humans are the only species, only species that, milk. that drink milk after infancy. One and humans are also the only species that drink milk of a different species, a cow or a goat. Nobody else does that. A cow's milk is supposed to raise a cow into a calf. You know how much weight gain that the calf needs is, is tremendous. And we all know what happens to mother's milk or even any mother's like human mother or a cow mother, whatever it is. Uh, they have different nutritional load depending on the age of their baby. Initially, the baby's needs are different. So the milk that the mother is producing has different nutrition. And that is specifically for that particular calf or that particular uh, animal that milk that we're drinking is not for humans. Although it's nutritionally dense, but having it consistently is something we should think about. I'm not saying we should stop having, but we should be conscious as to like, why do we have it? But you, I do agree with some of the points made here for vegetarians, uh, etc. There is some value in like, you know, having having milk, which is like very, very nutritionally dense. You get, you get a lot of like uh, benefits from having it. There are many other alternates milk without dairy milk. Exactly. So we should think about the other milks. Another yeah. thing, the doctor, medical doctor, I forgot his name. I think Benjamin spoke who was considered the person uh, for the women. Uh, and he came out in 60s that children or people don't need milk after eight months other than the mother's milk. And exactly. when he came out, people thought he had gone senile because here in this country, the dairy industry controls the whole thing, dairy and meat industry. So I think people from India should look at this thing very carefully that milk is not the right product. There are other products available and there are other substitutes available. Very rightly said. Uh, uh, um, and, and, and in this country, like you said, this milk industry and the meat industry, they are so intertwined. And if you look at how cows are treated, it's, it's really, really uh, uh, shameful uh, because, you know, I, I mean... If there's one animal I would never want to be born as, it is cow. Because the way we treat our cows in this modern world is just horrendous. Anyway, that's for a separate day, but let's move on in the interest of time. Okay, so this is what it is, right? Uh, uh, and this is what I was saying, right? Uh, if you are confused, if some of the things did not make sense to you, or you're like, oh, wait, I thought this was healthy. Uh, you're not alone. In fact, 80%, there was a research done survey, like what is your healthy food? 80% of the people in US are actually confused as to what is healthy and what is not healthy. Now, the reason that is happening is very simple in my head is because of all the marketing gimmicks, all the um, uh, sugar industry, the dairy industry, the, the pharmaceutical industry, the meat industry, doing all kind of manipulations and telling us this is good, that is not good, blaming something or the other. But And that's what leads to where we are, which is like 80% of, uh, of the population is confused. But here's the question, right? Can you afford to stay confused? The answer is no, clearly. The reason being there's there's so much, there's so much you can look around, but uh, the reality is two-thirds of adults in US, which is like two, 60, 60, more than 60% of people in the US are either obese or clinically overweight. And over 50% of US adults will be diabetic or pre-diabetic by the age of 65. Now, these are not like just random numbers. And this is happening. This is true for even India. India actually, diabetes is one of the pandemic in India, which is going to be like a, the next big thing any which ways. Uh, so we should really pay attention to what we are eating and not go with this, like, especially for people like us who are living in the US and have, are exposed so much to the Western way of doing things. We should pay extra uh, attention to what we put in our body in the, in the 
uh, in the realm of convenience and easy to cook, easy to make, we should always be mindful of like what kind of food we are eating. Now, uh, let's look at why we got here as humans, right? And I, the way I want to do this is to look through our evolutionary history. So if you think about it, uh, human homo sapiens as a general category of human beings have existed on this on earth for about 300,000 or 400,000 years, right? So for more than 96% of our evolutionary history, our ancestors were hunter gatherers. So what does that mean? They, that meant they would hunt animals and eat the meat and they would go and gather fruits, vegetables and nuts and eat what was available. So what that naturally meant was one, we had to put in the work to get the food. Food is not good. We cannot just go to a store, buy a bunch of things and come home and have it, right? Or order on DoorDash or get it delivered at home. Second thing, we were dependent on the nature, mother nature. So if there was a time where there was extra heat, maybe there's no food. There was a time when there was uh, uh, ex extreme winter, extreme famine, famine, there will be no food available. So therefore, uh, teamwork and fertile environment was the key to survival. And that is 96% of our ancestors have lived in a certain way. Now, why this is important is because when you, when most of your biological species have lived in a certain way, your bodies have evolved to understand that way of living. Now, if you look at the, if you fast forward 290,000 years, out of the 300,000 years, we are fast forwarding 290,000 years, which is the era of hunter gatherers. We come to the last 3% of our evolutionary history. And 10,000 years ago is when humans started using agriculture to cultivate crops, raise livestock for food and etc. What that naturally meant was food sources became more consistent. Now you're growing grains, you can store grains. So they become consistent, but still some amount of effort was needed. Although yes, you would have animals helping you, et cetera, et cetera. But farming does involve some kind of physical labor. So we were active and we were having more consistent form of foods available for longer periods of time. So we were not dependent on mother nature. Now fast forward the last hundred years. In the last hundred years, which is a fraction of how long our humans have lived on this earth, which is like point less than 0.1% of our evolutionary history. What has happened is, uh, uh, look, the reality is the population has boomed in the last hundred years. And therefore we had to keep up, we in the sense the humans in, as a collective species had to keep up with like feeding every human around the world, 8 billion people. So synthetic fertilizers became very, very common. Machinery dramatically reduced uh, or dramatically increased. In fact, uh, uh, crops yield, there was mechanization, there's industrialization everywhere. There was innovation in terms of enabling planting, GMO, uh, uh, modified, modified versions of different kinds of foods and all kinds of things were happening. And also there were big wealthy corporations. What is, if you, if you are a business, if you are a business, right, your main goal is to make money for the most part. It is true for more than 90% of the businesses. And if I told you, if you add sugar in your food, two things are going to happen. One, I'm, when I say sugar, I'm saying added sugar. One, it is sugar stimulates appetite. So if you have added sugar, you're going to feel more hungry. And two, sugar is addictive. In fact, it's as addictive as cocaine. So if I am a big corporation, if I start adding sugar on my food to a lot of sugar and salt, these are the two things, right? If I start adding on foods, people are going to love what I'm giving and then people are going to get addicted to my foods. And as a corporation, I'm going to get, make much more money at the expense of our own health. And that is what is happening in the last 0.1% of, uh, uh, of our evolutionary history, so to speak. And here's the modern challenge, right? Um, this is the picture of the, uh, uh, I mean, I, I really find this picture really depressing. I know some people will argue like, you know, uh, I was having this conversation the other day with my friend in India. He's like, oh no, you know, but in Gaushala, we treat our cows so well. I'm like, what do you think is happening to the cows after they die? They're going to get exported to some meat, meat eating country and, uh, and they're going to eat meat. That is the, look, there can be like many different shams or shady, you know, uh, uh, things under which something else is happening. So. Uh, my question is, do we really need that many cows in the world? We are artificially inseminating cows, making them produce more, making them give more milk, uh, getting them to get, you know, lay more, like have more calves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately what is happening is like, we are in a world where we are overfed and undernourished. We have so much food available. We are no longer dependent on mother nature. Uh, uh, we just have to go to a grocery store, sitting in our car, go there, get it and come back. Despite that, we food is no longer scarce, but we eat, we and we eat more than our ancestors ever ate. Despite that, we still are undernourished. Most of us are undernourished, and in fact, there is. I, I'll actually come to that book. So I actually I'll pause there uh, because that's something I want to cover later. But yeah, so here is the here is the modern challenge. Now um, I want to get to the next segment. 
but before uh, before i get there uh, uh, the question is like why am i telling you all this right uh, so the, uh, so here is where i want to tell you a little bit about myself uh, uh, <clears throat> i moved to us in 2016 um, until the i mean so so from 2010 to so 2020 is when i went through a major transformation right but if you look at the if you look at what happened before 10 years before that um, i thought i was living healthy because uh, i would work out for at least 5 days in a week at least spending 40 to 55 40 to 40 minutes to 60 minutes per day so on an average i was spending more than 200 minutes every week doing some kind of workout or the other i was i think i was eating healthy because my mom and dad told me khichdi is healthy uh roti sabji is healthy uh, dal chawal is healthy uh, fruits are healthy so yeah i was i was mostly salads were healthy i didn't think about the dressing at the time uh, but yeah i thought i was eating mostly healthy but what happened in the 10 years is like i put on 50 pounds to the point where um, you know at the in 2020 i had uh, i had my first daughter in 2018 2020 when she would come home i would not have the energy to sit and play with her my knees would hurt my energy levels were so low and i would just get annoyed and irritated with her which is something I, I I was really looking forward to like, you know, spending time with my daughter and I was going the other direction. Uh, so what I did was, I'm like, okay, before I get there. So my philosophy apart till this point was that no matter, I, I'm not worried about what I eat. As long as I can go work out in the gym or like do whatever my fitness activities, play sport, work out in the gym. I did all kinds of things. I did swimming, cycling, running, high intensity workout, CrossFit. Uh, you name it and i have done it gyms strength training yoga pilates i've done almost everything i have tried but nothing really really helped because my and at that point i was like okay let me take a step back uh, and because it was I, at this point i was where i was my weight was 99 kilos right and i'm like okay you know what i'm going to hit a century and this is not the type of century i want to hit in my life and if i get to 100 I don't know if I'm ever able, going to be able to change my health. And therefore, I was like, okay, I need to take things seriously. So let me question my beliefs and do something really different for the next three months. Uh, so I started with obviously like, you know, we go to Google, like, okay, I want to learn about food. I want to learn about nutrition. What do I do? This is one of the books that came up as one of the most recommended books. It's called How Not to Die. And this book really changed my life. What I learned from this book is the top 10 reasons why humans die off today. In the last hundred years, if you see it's all lifestyle diseases. Our ancestors never died of the reasons we die of today. So I was like, okay, so if this is true, let me understand nutrition because I think I'm eating healthy. I am working out. I'm doing everything that people have told me that I, at least my, my learning has been like, you know, go work out and, you know, try to eat, try to eat healthy, you know, roti sabji, dal chawal, salad, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I was, I was doing all of that. Then what is going on? And then I completely changed everything I ate. Within three months, the, the main thing I focused on is changing fundamentally everything I ate, questioning everything I was putting in my body. And two, I actually stopped all the workouts. And okay, if I completely flip the switch, if I completely flip my philosophy on its head, what is going to happen? In the three months, I lost the 50 pounds that I put on in the 10 years before. And not just me, like you can look at my wife's picture, right? She was not even following what I was doing, but because I was the primary chef in the house, I was doing most of the cooking and she was just following along she lost, I think, like 30 pounds in the whole process. Obviously, weight, like I said earlier, weight is just one indicator, right? I I, I learned it, like, you know, I mean, obviously, like, even I started with weight because that is an eye that was an eye-opener for me. But if you think about it, I started sleeping better. My I was able to focus for longer periods of time. My energy levels, even if I didn't eat food, I would have such high energy levels. Now I, I do intermittent fasting, like, sometimes 20 hours because I just don't feel hungry. And today, in fact, today, I haven't eaten any meal yet. Uh, I'm going to eat my first meal after the call, right? Like it's, I just go with my body, what my body feels like. If I feel hungry, sometimes I have breakfast. Sometimes if I'm not hungry, I mean, I do have coffee once in a while or uh, every morning or every afternoon, but I don't need, if I don't need to eat, I, I will not eat food just because it's breakfast time. I have to eat breakfast. I'm not going to stuff myself with breakfast. If I'm not hungry, I just respect my body. And that has been my biggest learning is like, you have to understand everybody is different, right? So you have to understand your body. Yes, you can go to a dietitian. You can go to a lot of external help you can get. But ultimately, it is your body. You have to put yourself in the driver's seat. You cannot have someone else in the driver's seat drive your car. You are where your body is your car. You put yourself in the driver's seat and have a map where you're going and know how you want to navigate that, that map. And uh, one, one more thing I want to mention here is like, obviously looking at my transformation in 2020, everybody around me was like, hey, what did you do? Tell us everything that you did. I'm like, okay, fine. Here is a bunch of things you should do. I give them a list of things. And they come back to me like two months later, like, so and this is not working out. Can you please help us? 
and that's when i started like doing my own programs and i'm like okay i, I can help you and then i started giving programs to my family and friends obviously for free for i wouldn't charge any money but seeing their results other people the word of mouth kept spreading so so much that yeah i'm four years into doing this and i still get referrals every every other week people are like hey can i sign up for your program and i can do this here i'm not here to sell my program but what i am telling you is like uh if i have done it if so many more people have seen results there is no reason why you cannot see the results it's just about like i said very very fundamentally anything that you are eating anything that you are drinking just question it see what goes inside it how is it reacting in your body and and then assess whether it's good for your body or not good for your body uh, okay yeah the last thing i want to mention is very very important is like you know people do a lot of diets people do a lot of uh, different health and fitness programs and what happens within like the next year you go meet them they're back to square one i have it's for i am a live example it's been like four years uh, i have transformed my learnings into a lifestyle and here are some of the uh, 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 like i said i've been working with people uh, i don't expect people to read this but on an, what i want people to take away is like a lot of people uh when you start focusing on your food you will you will see results there is no reason why you will not see results not just in terms of your health and fitness but also you will understand more about your body because that is ultimately what i ended up doing is like i understood how how body is how food is reacting to me i'll give you one example sabudana khichdi so i in that three months period i i did not eat sabudana uh, in fact three months after also i did not eat sabudana so there was a six month break i gave from eating sabudana and then i was craving sabudana khichdi so i ate sabudana khichdi after that day it took me 3 days to get that out of my system my it, it almost felt like someone has put a stone inside my stomach now i am not telling sabudana is bad what i am telling you is your body is capable of telling you what is good for the body and what is not good for the body we are so busy in our own worlds in our own lives and, and look everybody is busy i'm not i'm not saying in in a bad way but sometimes we have to just take a pause eat consciously and understand how it's reacting with our body just pay more be more mindful about it and you will get your own answers you will i tell people like you know you will be your own dietitian for the rest of your life if you can understand this okay so this comes this brings me to the three actionable takeaways that i want to leave you all with the first one which is probably self explanatory uh, drink more water when i say more i know people would say i drink a lot of water generally 3 liters or higher is what is recommended if you can have that that's amazing and try to get in 10k steps each day even if you're not getting 10k steps if you're not doing any steps start with something start with like 500 steps start with 1000 slowly start increasing it then get it to a mark where you feel comfortable 10000 is a general marker if people are already getting in some 4000 5000 try to push it the main idea is stay active don't stay sedentary and again don't do all 10000 steps in like one hour go finish it off no stay active throughout the day think about our hunter gatherers right they were active throughout the day we, we 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 all are having like so many so many of us have desk jobs it becomes really hard so you know sometimes just take a break get up make and you know the simple things you can do when you're going when you're going grocery shopping don't park your car to the closest entry point that's what we always look for right how can i park in such a way that i have to do the least amount of walking no do the opposite you are healthy you can move around park at the furthest away get in few more steps so what's wrong with like you know walking 5 minutes extra nothing is going to happen in fact you'll get your own get get the steps as well same thing with your uh, snack instead of getting the packet of food and keeping here get a bowl put some food and get it here and the next time you want the food again go back to the kitchen and get it back you can eat it but at least you know stay active and move around be more mindful of those those small things that can actually change uh, or in fact as in a big way so i uh, okay this one we covered this okay the second one is stay away from sugar i think we have all of us here understand one of the things that most of the people don't understand is the the food industry like i told you right if you are a corporation you want to make money you're going to add sugar soon you will realize hey people don't want to eat sugar so if you say anything has sugar they will say oh i don't want this so what does what do i do i will hide sugar under different names here is a list of 60 different names of under which sugar is added in our food it will not show up as sugar it will not say cane sugar or just sugar it will call it will most like you know you will have some like xanthan gum is the most common one especially in milk uh, uh, ramen kal you are talking about uh, milk alternatives a lot of milk alternatives actually add uh, xanthan gum there is this one particular brand which i particularly like it's called malk m a l k 
it doesn't add any gums no preservatives it is one of the most i felt cleanest form of non dairy uh, milk that i think whenever i feel like having dairy i normally try to consume that uh, in my in my coffee or tea but here is the list of 60 different names of sugar now what i what i want to tell you is like next time very simple thing you go to a grocery store you pick up a packet flip it around look at the ingredients if you if you see sugar so ingredients are always listed in the order of uh, uh, the the proportions that went into making it so for example if sugar is number 1 that means the highest amount of ingredient that was put in this by weight was sugar so you will see that sugar is actually in top 3 in most of the packaged food unless that that particular brand stands for non sugary healthy foods so flip the packet around you don't have to remember all the 60 different names but once you like i told you common names are corn syrup fructose uh, xanthan gum uh, once you start getting into the habit of doing it it becomes second nature like i don't remember any of this names but i'm very sure when i go grocery shopping i can just flip the packet and i can tell you if this has sugar or not the other way to do this is when you flip the packet not just the ingredients there is this nutritional label there has two two markations of sugar one is called total sugar one is called added sugar total sugar is is sugar from natural sources like for example if it has dried apples it will have some sugar right so that is combination of that plus refined sugar that is added on top and the second column which is include to added sugar is essentially all the sugar that was added on top like refined sugar that we should not be consuming so if any packet has added sugar which is more and which is giving you more than 10% or 8% of the calories are coming from that particular line item don't eat it and the last thing is protect yourself from marketing gimmicks i think we were discussing about this a little while earlier no fat this low fat that high immune high heart health real fruit gmo verified blah 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 there is if if you go look down if you go down this rabbit hole there is a big scandal with all of this these are all marketing gimmicks at the end of the day what you always always have to remember is flip the packet around we were talking about processed food general rule of thumb is that if you read ingredients and either if you cannot pronounce it or you don't have never heard of it or you don't know the meaning of it something bicarbonate i don't know what it means great that's the reason why you should not put it in your body if you don't know what's gone into your food there is no reason for it to exist inside your body simple as that if you if your dream car is ferrari you're not going to fuel it with kerosene and try to run it at like and, and i expect it to give like 100 miles in 3 seconds no that's not going to happen if your dream car is ferrari you better fuel it with high octane fuel that will enable or enhance its performance and that brings me to the end of uh, the slides that i wanted to cover uh, th these are some of the reading material or some of the things that you can watch or listen uh, i highly recommend uh, uh, i don't know if folks already have the slide but if not i can share the pdf version of the slide but like i was talking about sugar industry spare research to blame fat the link is right there in fact there was a time i don't know if you guys remember in i think it was in 1970s or 1980s doctors would smoke cigarettes while delivering babies in fact pregnant ladies were told that hey you should smoke cigarette because it's good for a baby so so yeah don't don't follow advice that's like very marketing related really really pay attention to like you know what is going on how you feel uh, and that will that will be the ultimate answer for like long term sustenance and that brings me to the end of the slide and i want to leave you with this particular quote which is and i really live by this which is motivation gets you started so whenever you are motivated it's very easy to start anything but discipline is what will keep you going remember health and fitness is not a destination it's a journey and for journey like you know if you are following cricket every cricketer tells us every time you start from a zero no matter if you have scored a century or not yesterday or in the previous game you start with zero so you have to do do the things all over again so build discipline build habit focus on building habits even if they are small habits the habit can be like walking 5 minutes a day walking 10 minutes a day after food i'm going to walk before this thing i'm going to walk whatever it is but focus on discipline more than motivation don't just wake up one day and say okay today is the day i'm going to run 10 10000 kilometers no instead of that say okay how can i break down this 10000 kilometers on in 30 days and do whatever 300 meters every day something like that Yes, Ram. So, in you have done excellent job to transform your life from your own experience, which is very good. I was attending a natural cure center in Vidhya Sarvodaya Kendra. 
and they invite the doctor and what Dr. Maru, local doctor Maru, came one day to lecture, you know, what is the best food to eat? Mm. The first, the best food is the raw food. Yeah. How many people can eat raw food? At least you can eat vegetables and fruits. The next thing could be the boiled one. And third thing could be what our natural nowadays we eat, that. But the organic food is, the best thing is the grain directly which comes from the farm or wood or whatever, and you cook and eat at home. Any processed food is a product. It's not a food. It's a product food which has been added so many chemicals and that's why we see lots of cancers and all kinds of problems here and now no i understand people don't have time to cook and all that thing the best thing is to cook the food at home simple way to do it without the, the product we buy from the stores has so many chemicals which are not necessary in your food diet you know we i used to have a, you know love soup so we used to buy soup and we looked at that label, 33% salt in it. No, you now don't. you can make soup at home very easily. Soup yeah. is the best product you can have. But the lesser you go through the process making the food, you are better off. So as the doctor said, raw is the best. Second thing is the boil. And th third thing is the what you are you know, eating nowadays. And then many times, you know, we are vegetarians, so-called vegetarians, and we cook our vegetables and we cook them. We burn up all the vitamins they have, you know. We put a lot of oil in it and all those kind of things. So I think we have to change the fundamentally. Yeah. Uh, the How we prepare the food, how we eat the food. And another thing, we are giants. And if you have looked at the giant tapa, Giant Tapa covers most of the best thing for your life. One thing is upwas. Once in a while, person should do the upwas. Second thing is intermittent fasting, which is nothing but whatever nowadays the medical people are saying uh, that intermittent fasting. But if you have a sunset to sunrise, no eating food, it is intermittent fasting. Our giant a tap, one of the top is Ras Paritryag. It says clearly, minimize salt, sugar, oil, milk, all these things. About five or six elements, you Ras Paritryag. So if we follow some of the things, and then another thing for a better life is the internal tap, which is a meditation, Yoga, good sleep, all those are the good factors uh, for a good life. I will stop at that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the inputs. Uh, uh, yeah, I completely agree with like, and, and, and one, one more thing I want to emphasize to based on what Ramankal was also saying was that food is definitely something you should pay the most attention, but at the same time, staying active, yoga, walk, whatever that you're doing, I think that is also equally important just because you know, now I'm, I've reduced like 50 pounds. Now I don't need to worry about anything. No, no, no. You also have to think about, I, I, I differentiate between lifespan and health span. Lifespan is how longer you live. Health span is how longer. My goal is to increase my health span, which is the number of years I can live without taking any medication on a consistent basis. Like if you look at most people around, like I look at people in India, like my masas, masis, kaka kakis, everybody I know is on a, daily medication daily two or three medications they're giving and my goal is to prolong that period of that phase of my life for as long as i can and that is the true measure of life for me is like once you start having medications you're probably you know um uh, you're halfway there so that that's how i look at it i'm no disrespect to anybody but uh uncle thank you for the inputs so i have two questions for you yes so are you a vegan now you don't eat any milk products so do no cheese no ghee no butter so I am, uh, so I, yeah, I, for the 90% of the time I am vegan, which means I try to avoid it as much as possible. Oh, avoid, uh, okay. 
Yeah. Then how so, do you how do you manage with your two little girls? The since you say you only eat, you are the main cook, and you cook once a day or whatever. How do you manage with the girls? Uh, uh, that yeah, diet. Great question, Kaki. I think one of the thing, beautiful things that has happened in my journey is like, you know... Did you are... call me Kaki? You recognize me who I am? Of course I recognize you. <laughs> of course I recognize okay. you, Bharati Kaki. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I was saying, yeah, so it's it's a very beautiful thing because, you know, our kids, uh, just for context for everybody, I have a six-year-old, uh, I have two daughters. One is a six-year-old and one is six-month-old. Um uh the beautiful thing that has happened in my journey is like my daughter uh, our kids are like absorbing everything at that age right she's absorbed so much of what i'm doing that she's so conscious i'll give you one example this uh -huh. weekend birthday party and they were serving cake okay uh they were like hey um ahana have cake so she refused and they came to me they're like hey she's not having cake i'm like yeah you ask her if she wants she'll have it and then she didn't have the cake and she came and told me i told why are you not having cake she's like no dad if i eat cake it has too much sugar and then i will have a stomach pain later because what I did with my kids is I don't tell them not to eat something. I tell them, hey, you know what? If she's crying for ice cream, there are times the kids, you know, yeah. she get influenced. Yeah. I'm like, if you want to eat ice cream, eat ice cream. But two hours later, and you're not going to eat anything else except ice cream. Eat how many other ice creams you want. But if two hours later, if your stomach is hurting, it is because of the sugar that's gone in your ice cream. Remember that. And it, it happened to her. Because that's what happens. You you just make people mindful of what they're eating, how it's going to happen, react to your body. Don't blame something else. Oh, I had a busy day because of which my stomach is hurting. I did something. But no, no, no. It's hurting because of sugar. Let's make it clear. And next time, be careful. Be mindful. But that being said, you know, she has things which I like. I don't eat, but she has it. But she knows every morning I will have my greens or every morning I'll make my greens. I'll make it at home. She looks at me doing things and she gets influenced just naturally. So it must be hard to pack a lunch for her then. No, it's not that hard. You know, she loves uh, brown chana. Just I just boil and give her with some salt. She loves it. Yeah, and it's like, it in our mama. house too. So, Sohin is an excellent uh, cook, also with really, really creative recipes. And uh, we have been fortunate guinea pigs to yeah, his I made, creation. I, made, like, I was craving. <laughs> I was craving ice cream so bad. I made ice cream without refined sugar, only with dates. Dates. Yes. Skin seeds, watermelon seeds, cacao powder, almond butter, with cashews. He makes Just, really great uh, sandwiches without bread. Yeah, so, sandwiches without bread. Yeah, I mean, that is nice. it's like monkey see, monkey do. So, whatever <laughs> we do, children see and children uh, they learn from that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Hill, maybe can you stop sharing? Uh, yes, I think there's one last thing. Uh, I don't know if Nibriti uh, is on the call yet. And she wanted to close it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Are uh, we Nibiru, taking questions or... yet? Or or we have time? Anybody else has questions? I have a comment. I think we have to... Jains, particularly, we are vegetarian, of course. But it's about time now to, we have to go become vegan. For health reason, for the spiritual reason, for the moral reason. In that also, Jain vegan. And also, I'll tell you, vegan more, is the best. Yeah, and I'll add one more thing for environmental reason because most of the global warming doesn't come from the pollution of our cars. It comes from the farts of the cows, the methane that gets released. Go, go Google it. Like global warming, more than the pollution of the cars is happening because of the cows. So even from an environmental the, standpoint, and the, the amount of plants. Sorry? The methane gas. Methane gas, exactly. And the amount of land you need to feed those cows, grazing, etc., etc., that is, it, it, yeah, you are, you're cutting down forests and, you know, making those uh, lands for the animals. But yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, my, my tendency is not to force people to, you know, go vegan or not vegan, but I generally tell people to, you know, be, if you are conscious and if you, if you actually connect with your body and see how it's feeling, you will realize the way to realize this, if anybody wants to experiment is like, I tell people, give up a certain food for 30 days, 40 days, 60 days, however long you can give up. And then introduce that food back again and be very mindful of what is going on in your body. And you will have the answer for yourself whether it's good for you or not. You don't have to go to anybody. I, I tell our Jain center here that many of Jains do the uh, Atam or Chaudas or something like that and they don't eat something. You do the Iron Bill and something. Why can't you become vegan for at least once a week? 
And you practice. Many people say vegan is too much tough. It's not tough. It's just our mental uh, no, attitude. Exactly. And exactly. I think you have to do at least once a week. You start out with, and then you will do it more. And our Jain Center of Minnesota is a small, but it has gone vegan, at least on the public functions sponsored by Jain Center of Minnesota. We tell our Jain committees that all food should be vegan, at least four or five times a year. That's amazing. I think, I think there's one more hand up. Ranjan Ben, you have a question? Yes, I mean, I have a question. Um, I have what? been vegan for a few years now. But every year I do go to India and um, I have a difficulty finding uh, uh, organic uh, vegan milk there. Do you have any idea? Uh, yes. You can go to the D-Mart. D-Mart has the milk, vegan milk. But is it organic? I, I'm, I usually have a soy milk with my chai. Uh, and, they have uh, soy milk, they have uh, almond milk, they have uh, even kesar flavor uh, vegan milk. Now, I don't know whether it's organic or not. I have not looked at the label. But I always find at D-Mart. Okay. Yeah, this year I'm going with, um, I'm taking some soy powder actually from here. Uh, but you know what? In America, U.S., are more people turning vegan, more products vegans available. It's very difficult in India. Yeah, that's what I'm two, saying. Two, two and a half months I go, and I have to tell my relatives, you know, what I can eat and what I don't eat. But I say, don't bother about it. If it's not there, it's okay. You know, you don't have to eat that. So I mm. think we have to have a kind of a willpower to avoid certain things if they don't meet our standards. Yeah, I usually cook at home anyway there, so I don't have much problem unless I go to my relative's house. And um, so then 100% uh, becomes 90% sometime in India. So yeah. can I say something? I, that. Yeah. I have a 14-year-old son. He has gone vegan for past three years since he was 11. He's gone vegan out of his own choice. He goes to India every single year. He finds his way through. Yeah. And he, he loves going to India. So every single year he goes to India and he is able to find his way through. Yeah, and some yeah. of the awareness in India is also well, increasing. Well, well, it's fine, but uh, I stay there two, three months. So it makes Can I difference. ask something? Can we stop sharing uh, Sohin? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. He so wanted to so. see people, right? It's easier to see. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are running over time now. Uh, All right. Thank you. Dimple, you want to get a picture if, if people want to turn on their cameras? Yeah. Sure, if people could turn on their camera. Um. Okay. I'll wait. While I'm waiting, I'm going to throw in one question where as we are like leaning more and more towards veganism. This is like two months over later. Um, what I've been hearing is Vegan milk is a lot more processed. So mm -hmm. it's a catch between having a regular milk versus the vegan milk, which is a lot more processed, right? It's same as having a regular natural food versus processed, low fat, uh, no fat food. So it's something to think about. I'm going to take a click now if everybody's ready. Even more. Okay. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to add something if I can take a couple of minutes. Sure. I mean, I don't know. I'm happy to. So, so in my life story is a little bit like yours. When I came to America first time in 1984, I was 160 pounds. Uh, then from 160, it increased to 300 pounds. And in last two, three years, I lost 75 pounds. And first time I'm able to maintain it. And I need to lose 75 more. So I want my target is 160 pounds back. And I'm a pure Jain by diet. 
and at the same time i have been to bidra i have been to jindal all the naturopathy centers also but what happens when i go there i lose the weight again after coming out of there i gain it back so this is the first time i am able to keep it off so i was very happy to hear all the points that you suggested and some of the other uh, participants suggested so thank you so much for that and thanks the active circle also for that and thank you bhavini ben dimple and everybody for arranging this uh, no congratulations uh, narendra bhai i think it's pretty massive you know losing 75 pounds finding that motivation and keeping it off is not easy i can i can definitely vouch for that that is the hardest part <laughs> keeping it off exactly and then i right now i have reached a plateau so i am trying to think what to do in order to again uh, start losing weight the but i will stop here and let anybody else ca continue or then we can stop whatever way it works out just want to say thank you for your time sohin good research and well done well presentation presentation was very good thank are you. you going to send us the presentation sohin yeah uh, i think uh, bhavani ben or dimple ben if one of you can forward it you guys have it right can we forward the presentation yes yes you need to fix that slide that we had okay yeah, let me send you the updated one then. yep okay. thank you uh, dimple nivrati uh, thank you sohin uh, thank you sohin uncle for hosting this and talking and thank you everyone else for joining we hope that this session opened your eyes on just how to live a better lifestyle overall and then if you have any questions you can always feel free to reach out to any of us but thank you guys thank you bhavani masi and dimple masi for organizing uh, share your numbers sohin nivrati uh, anya please share your numbers yeah we will share the, the, the part of the